Good morning, my lovely people. It is time for some caffeine and bike maintenance. Yesterday, we hit some ruts pretty hard coming up along the Thai border. It is a lovely dirt road along there and some beautiful scenery with the cardamom mountains on your right. But the wet season has come early this year and so with a few torrential downpours already, there are some pretty good washouts. So as you can imagine, Beastie and I cruised over those. But today I am just checking for any bits that might have been loosened or knocked out of place. I noticed that there was a bit of a rattle going on somewhere down near my front brake caliper, so I'm just going to pull that off and have a quick look. When I was in Vietnam a couple of years ago, I wore out a brake pin, which caused me some issues. And so I am just checking to make sure that there's no wear and tear going on there that I need to be concerned about. Now this morning you find me in a little town called Pramawi, and we are basically in the middle of nowhere, except that's not quite correct because we're in the middle of the Cardamom Mountains and it's very, very pretty up here. However, we have been having storm after storm, so this morning I cannot actually see the mountains, they are shrouded in cloud. Happily, it's not raining on me just yet, so I am hopeful that I will make it about 120 kilometers north through some more dirt roads on my way up to Batambang before the rain starts falling again this afternoon. A little bit of rain never hurt anyone, but a lot of rain on some of these red and yellow clay roads can be a little bit exciting. The prospect of getting caught in bad conditions does worry me a little bit. I have to admit there is a little bit of anxiety there in the back of my mind, which wouldn't be there if I didn't ride alone. But that's a price that I choose to pay in exchange for my independence and also for this vagrant lifestyle, because if I waited around for other people to be ready to spend five years riding around the world, I would still be waiting. So this is what I look like when I am trying to undo my rear axle bolt without a breaker bar. As you can see, it's not exactly elegant, but I can do it, and so we're all good. I need to adjust my chain tension because my chain is on its way out. The rear sprocket is pretty much toast and that chain is stretching rapidly now. I ordered a new set of sprockets about two weeks ago now, but they are on their way from the United States and they could take a long time to get here. So hopefully I can get this set of chain and sprockets to last just long enough. Now the weirdest thing has happened to my toolkit. I opened it up today and normally I have a 10 mil, I have a 12 and I have a 14. But today I find that I have two 8 mils and two 10 mils and no 12, no 14. I have no recollection of how this could possibly have happened and indeed it seems like black magic because we all know that the cardinal rule of 10 mil spanners is that they always disappear. And here we have mine which now seem to be multiplying. It's very mysterious and I have no idea how this could have happened. But anyway, it is what it is. And fortunately, I have a small shifter, which I found on the road one day in Brisbane many moons ago. And I've kept it and carried it all this way for just this day. This day when, for some reason, I don't have a 12 or a 14 and I need to adjust my chain tension. Now, this task is complicated by the fact that my hands won't stop shaking. I'm pretty sure this is because of the massive overdose of sugar that I've just ingested. Having gone to the coffee stall in the village and asked for a cafe latte. Anyway, I love my cafe latte, but this will learn me, this will learn me real good, because there's no fresh milk here out in the village. So instead, I've been given a latte made with condensed milk, and you can only imagine how much sugar that contains. Now, I'm desperate enough for my hot morning coffee that I'm going to drink it anyway. And now, like I say, my hands are shaking because, oh my goodness, so much sugar. 
Now there's part of me that wants to call this problem with my cafe latte a first world problem, but actually it's not, it's exactly the opposite. The overconsumption of sugar is a serious developing world problem, and I saw it all through East Timor, through the remote parts of Indonesia, and here through the more remote parts of Cambodia. Sugar is cheap, and processed sugary foods are consumed en masse and with seemingly reckless abandon. We are knee-deep in hyper-sweetened drinks, and this is going to come home to roost later for this generation, as diabetes and other so-called lifestyle diseases. Of course, here it really isn't a lifestyle disease. It's more an issue of malnutrition. The sticking point being that adequate nutrition is not just about adequate calories. In East Timor, for example, 40% of the population has stunted growth because of inadequate protein in their diets during the developmental stages of life. What is going on there is that the people are consuming cheap white rice imported from Indonesia and sugar as a treat, whereas the sources of protein such as animals and eggs are not being widely consumed. Instead, people are selling their pigs in order to generate cash. They're selling their chickens and their eggs in order to be able to purchase consumer goods. The result being that the family might own a scooter, for example, but the children grow up stunted and malnourished, not because they're hungry, but because they haven't been eating the right kinds of food. Anyway, that was me off on a complete tangent. Suffice to say that I have now adjusted my chain tension, I've oiled my chain, I've checked my front brake situation, confirmed that I need new tires, no surprise there. And now all I need to do is reattach that loose bit of heat shield to my exhaust. The bolt has broken off, so it's going to be a tie wire job. Last but not least, I am going to do a 15 minute idle reset because the bike has been running really, really badly at low revs. My air filter is clean, so it's not that. It could be the really terrible fuel quality, and there's nothing I can do about that right now. But the other option is, of course, that the ECU just needs to reset its baselines for the current conditions. Altitude, air temperature, humidity, all of that. So I will do the 15 minute idle reset and see how we go. I've checked the oil level, she's not using oil, everything is looking good. All I need to do now is get my shit together and get back on the road. <laughs> 